What's up guys? This is my prediction for the Ultimate Fighter Season 25 finale coming up this Friday. So let's get started with the featured fight on the Fight Pass card. Grey Maynard versus Taruto Ishihara. Grey Maynard, he is over the hill at this point. I mean, his prime is gone. He can't take a shot nearly as good as he used to when he was in his prime. He's a featherweight now, so his power and his strength is going to translate very well. Grey Maynard is a wrestler with some real power in his hands. He's a bit slower, especially coming down to featherweight, and he's a bit one-dimensional. Very powerful wrestler, very aggressive and pressuring. He tries to land that right hand a lot. That's pretty much his go-to punch is that right overhand. But he's fighting Toroto Ichihara, who is very quick, has deceptive knockout power. His countering ability is very good. His switching stances, as well as finding the target for his left hand. It's very tricky, and it's very unpredictable. His weakness has been his cardio. He has gassed out in his uh, recent fights, especially with the Artem Loba fight. But in this fight, I'm going to go with Ishihara, and I'm going to go by a first round knockout. I think he's going to counter Gray Maynard. I think the speed is going to be a huge part of this fight. And then we go to the main card, Brad Tavares versus Elias Theodoro. This is a pretty interesting fight. You have Brad Tavares who is more of a striker, boxer really. He has a real knockout power. He's been up and down in his career and he's coming off a split decision win in his last fight and before that he got knocked off viciously by Robert Whitaker. And he's fighting Elias Theodoro who is a very well-rounded fighter, very pressuring, does not get tired. His cardio seems like it's endless. He has been criticized for keeping it a bit safe in his fights. He likes to push his opponents against the cage, control them, and not to not give out too many risks. But in this fight, I'm going to go with Elias Theodoro. I think he's going to beat Tavares pretty much everywhere. He might have some problems entering and closing that distance in the first round. But after establishing his distance and establishing his pressure, I think he's going to just carry the fight through and win by a clear decision. And then we go to Mark Diacasey versus Drakkar Klose. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But this might be the fight I'm looking forward to the most in the card. Mainly because of Mark Diacasey. He is one of my most watched prospects in MMA right now, especially of what he's been doing in the UFC. It's crazy. He's 12-0, and 0, very young, one of the most athletic guys I've ever seen in the UFC. In his last fight, the way he landed that two-touch kick, I'd never seen anyone utilize it in the UFC, and he actually said he was only practicing it for a week. If he can develop those level of skills and techniques, like the two-touch, and get it down to a T in only a week, I mean, this guy is someone to watch out for. He has crazy knockout power, extremely fast for a lightweight, really good takedown defense, and also really underrated takedowns himself. I believe his further evolution is going to show more takedowns and more offensive wrestling. And he's fighting Drakkar, who is also kind of a prospect and a very dangerous fighter as well. He always looks for the knockout straight from the beginning of the fight, throws heavy hands, Although he doesn't have the speed that Dia Casey has. He has the power, but he just doesn't have the quickness and the movement and the athleticism that Dia Casey has. He likes to swarm his opponents and land power shots constantly, trying to knock his opponent out. So this fight is going to be really interesting to watch and very fun to watch because both these guys are going to go right at each other. But if I'm going to have to pick, I'm going to go by Mark Dia Casey and I'm going to go by a first round knockout. I think he's going to catch Drakkar early on, catch him on the inside with swift shots and... The power is just going to be too much, and the speed especially is going to be the deciding factor in the fight. Then we go to the main event. Michael Johnson versus Justin Gaethje. This is going to be a really fun fight. You have Michael Johnson, who is an exciting fighter, has probably the fastest hands in the lightweight division. Really good footwork, very athletic. He has good takedowns as well. His boxing is excellent. He's really good with timing his left hand, his straight left specifically. And he's fighting Justin Gaethje, who is coming from World Series of Fighting. He was a lightweight champion there. People regard him as a top five lightweight in the world. This is his chance to show his case here. Undefeated, 17-0. If you ever see his interviews, he always says that he's the most violent fighter in the lightweight division. And he probably is. If you ever seen him fight, he goes for broke right in the beginning until the end of the fight. He breaks his opponents. They're not ready for his chopping leg kicks. They can't take him down. His takedown defense is amazing. He was a high-level wrestler, NCAA collegiate wrestler. He overwhelms his opponents. He puts on heavy pressure on his opponents. Volume punches. His leg kicks are insanely powerful. It's crazy how he hits people with these leg kicks once or twice and affects the fighter the whole fight. And I believe the leg kicks can be a big problem against Michael Johnson because Michael Johnson has a tendency to not check leg kicks and Gacy likes to mix up his leg kicks with his right hand down the middle his left hook I mean this guy is just looking to knock you out with every shot he throws in the feet but in this fight I'm gonna go with Michael Johnson and I'm gonna go by a first or second round knockout the reason why I'm going with Michael Johnson here is I think the speed 
and the in and out movement of Johnson is going to be the deciding factor in the fight. I think it's straight shots down the middle and able to exit from the pressuring aggressive Gaethje is going to give some issues out there. Gaethje doesn't have the greatest footwork. He likes to come forward at you, try to cut you off, and he's not the fastest guy. And also Justin Gaethje's mentality, right? He likes to say that he likes to go through shots. He likes to get hit sometimes. He acts like he's a juggernaut, right? And I think that mentality is going to backfire on him this time. Because Michael Johnson is hard, and I think he might be underestimating Johnson just a little bit. Or overestimating himself a little bit. I don't think he's going to be able to take Johnson's shots, and I think he's going to get surprised when he gets hit. But this fight is really hard to call, though, because Gaethje is one of those guys that you just cannot count out. He could end the fight with any shot. I'm going to go by Michael Johnson. I think he's going to catch him, throw his hands right down the middle, exit, and stun Gagey constantly by doing this and then finishing him. So that's my prediction video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to have my other prediction video for UFC 213 coming out later today. And yes, I know some people are waiting for the Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather breakdown, and that should be out most likely by this weekend. Some things were delaying it, but it's 100% going to come out before Monday. And make sure to comment below what your guys' predictions are. And also, what fight in the whole weekend are you looking forward to the most? I'm curious to see what you guys think. And also, make sure to watch the fights. The Friday card looks a lot of fun. And the Saturday card is just an amazing card from top to bottom. One of the best cards of the year. Probably right behind 211 and 214. But I think it competes with 211 um, as far as the names and the exciting matchups. So make sure to watch the fights, guys. And again... Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.